Scarlet and Violet have been out for less than a year, but competitive players are already pushing the game to its limits. As the first competitive season is about to end with the Pokemon World Championships, I'm here to show you my personal 10 best plays so far, starting with an incredible play from the North American International Championships last weekend. Chop Across is down a game against Alex Gomez from Spain, and he's about to lose. He's down to his last two Pokemon, Goldengo and Iron Bundle, while his opponent still has all four. Iron Bundle does not do enough damage to turn this game around, and Goldengo is at low HP. To make make things worse, Goldengo was carrying the choice specs item, meaning whatever move it uses first, it'll be forced to use for the rest of the game. Anyone watching this game would assume it was already over, but Chuppa sees a way out. He correctly predicts his opponent to go for a double protect, and to everyone's surprise, uses Trick on his own Iron Bundle, giving it the choice specs for extra power. Usually Trick is used on the opponent to limit their move choices. On the next turn, he uses Trick again, this time on his opponent's Dendozo. This lets him steal Dendozo's leftovers and avoid Sucker Punch letting Iron Bundle knock out Chen Pao while keeping both his Pokemon alive, giving him a chance of winning the game later on. Our number nine play comes from a player named Ofamezi, who made an incredibly gutsy play by making his opponent's Pokemon stronger in the semifinals of a regional event. His Fluttermane and Murkrow are staring down King Gambit and Torkoal. Ofamezi switches his Fluttermane into Gyarados, whose Intimidate ability does two things. First, it activates King Gambit's Defiant ability, making its already high attack 50% stronger. Second, it activates Torkoal's Eject Pack, which forces it to switch out when any stat is lowered. Forcing Torkoal out is great, but King Gambit is about to be a problem. Thanks to the boost, its damage is completely out of hand, and Ophimezi only has a Murkrow to get rid of it. Except, Ophimezi correctly predicted King Gambit would terastalize to fire, and now we can see why they made King Gambit stronger. Murkrow's only damaging move is Foul Play, a move that does more damage the higher the opponent's attack stat is. And thanks to the terastalization and the attack boost, Foul Play does over half of King Gambit's HP getting crucial damage on a super threatening Pokemon early on in the game. Our number eight play features a player attacking themselves in the quarterfinals of a regional event. Giovanni Piscitelli is in a precarious situation. His Volcarona is at very low HP and poisoned. All his opponent needs to do is protect both of their Pokemon and let the poison damage take out Volcarona. But Giovanni knows he has to keep Volcarona alive at all costs and makes an incredible play attacking his own Mimikyu with Giga Drain. Mimikyu survives the attack, and thanks to the HP recovered, Volcarona makes it through the turn as well. Giovanni follows this turn up by predicting the opponent's Dendozo to Terastalize to Steel, and uses Heat Wave to both knock out the opponent's Glamora and do huge damage to Dendozo. Our number seven play took place during the first stage of a regional event. Maurice Uteg has Goldengo in the field next to Amoongus, but it seems doomed against his opponent, King Gambit. It's already set up a swords dance, and though Maurice tried to put it to sleep, it was holding the Lumberry, waking it up. Both Goldengo and Amoongus are now under pressure of being KO'd by King Gambit. While Goldengo can't really do much damage to King Gambit since Ting Lu is making it weaker, and King Gambit resists all of Goldengo's attacks. This match looks over, but is it? Maurice risks it all and protects Amoongus and goes for another nasty plot. His opponent, thinking there's no way that Goldengo does something this risky, double attacks the Amoongus and terastalizes King Gambit to dark to make sure that it goes down. But because Amoongus survived and Goldengo got stronger, Maurice can launch a super-powered Make It Rain next turn and win the game. Our number six play took place during the finals of a huge international tournament taking place between Alex Gomez and Regav Malavia. Alex won game one thanks to his Dragapult tearing through his opponent's team. So for game two, Regav adapts by leading Amoongus and Arcanine. This way, he can either burn or sleep Dragapult, who can only really damage one of them. It seems like Alex can only stop one of the two with Fake Out, but he makes an incredible play and goes for Phantom Force with Dragapult to avoid both attacks. Regov fears the Phantom Force is targeted into Arcanine and therefore switches it out into Iron Hands, since Amoongus should be able to take even a Choice Band boosted hit. But Alex predicts that again and switches in Chen Pao to lower Amoongus' defense with its Sword of Ruin ability. 
allowing Dragapult to pick up the KO while somehow also getting Dragapult out of what looked like an impossible situation. Our number five play also comes from the North American Internationals, featuring Jody Azzarelli, who's in the quarterfinals. Unfortunately, it looks like his run will end here. He's down a game and his opponent is threatening big damage with their boosted Fluttermane and he doesn't have an obvious way of stopping it. Normally, Iron Hand could protect itself by using Fake Out to stop an opponent from moving for one turn, but Fluttermane is a ghost type, making it immune to Fake Out. But Jody goes all in on the first turn of the battle and uses Fake Out into the ghost type Fluttermane. This is a ridiculous gamble, but Fluttermane terrestrializes into the fairy type, which causes Fake Out to stop it from moving. This allows Jody to knock it out quickly and gain a huge lead in game two that he won't let go of. The number four spot on our list features Alex Gomez once again, this time in the quarterfinals of the North American International Championships. He's facing down a Goldengo and Chen Pao with his own 1 HP Chen Pao and Dundozo. Alex could go for a Sucker Punch into the Goldengo, which would give him a good chance of dodging his opponent's Sucker Punch and also pick up the KO, but uh, that just seems too obvious for him. He realizes that his opponent will likely switch out Goldengo to save it for later, but which Pokemon will they bring in? Understanding what his opponent is planning, to the surprise of the casters and the crowd, he launches an Ice Spinner into the Goldengo. Alex risks losing both Pokemon here if his opponent goes for Sucker Punch and attacks with Goldengo, but the risk pays off as Goldengo switches out into a full HP Dragonite that gets KO'd on the spot removing a huge threat from the battle and giving Alex an enormous lead. The third best play on our list took place during the finals of the European International Championships. America's Paul Chua is in game three against Gabriel Agati from Brazil. With both players just being one win away from the title, they both lead off with the exact same Pokemon as they brought in games one and two. Both times, Gabriel terastalized Vexcalibur to poison to resist Fluttermane's super effective fairy type attacks. With only a baby Palafin as the partner, there seems to be no way to punish this way from Gabrielle if he goes for it again. But Paul risks it all in this deciding game three. He predicts the Terra Poison, and in return, terastalizes his own baby Palafin, doubling up into the Baxcalibur with Shadow Ball and Wave Crash, a combination that would never KO Baxcalibur unless it terastalized. This combination of moves gets the knockout and eventually leads to Paul winning the tournament. Our runner-up slot goes to a play that is particularly ingenious, taking place between James Beck and Luca Paz. Each player has won a game already, so whoever wins this game three will win the set. James is under pressure from his opponent, Amoongus. It can spore his Fluttermane and render it unable to attack. The thing is, James doesn't really want to switch out his Fluttermane, he wants it to do damage. So he makes an incredible play, attacking his Fluttermane with his own Arcanine's Will-O-Wisp, burning it. Since Pokemon can only be affected by one status condition at a time, this prevents Amoongus from putting Fluttermane to sleep. James follows up this incredible play with an aggressive prediction, using Will-O-Wisp into Arcanine as it switches to Palafin. With these great burns, James wins the game and the set. This play was so memorable that we saw a huge upswing of players burning their own Pokemon after it happened. Before we talk about the number one play, we've got to talk about some honorable mentions. I wasn't sure if it was fair to include my own plays in this top 10 list since I'm the one making it, so I'm giving myself an honorable mention instead. This play comes from the semi-finals of a huge regional event. I'm up a game, but my opponent has Gothitelle, a Pokemon that disrupts my Perish Trap strategy. I've got Heroform Palafin and my own Gothitelle against my opponent's Dragonite and Gothitelle, with everything affected by Perish Song except for Palafin. In. Wanting to get rid of the Perish Song effect, James switches his Gothitelle to Tyranitar and launches an extreme speed into Palafin, but I predict Tyranitar to switch in and use Wave Crash, dropping Palafin to very low HP. Thankfully, in this exact same turn, I also used Gothitelle's Heal Pulse, recovering Palafin's health by 50%. Thanks to this play, I'm so far ahead that I'm able to win the game, letting me advance to the finals. Our second honorable mention comes from an invitational tournament not on the official circuit, between Ludwig and Boyd. Ludwig has Meowth Grotta and Mimikyu against his opponents Mousehold and Annihilate. Ludwig hard reads his opponent, bringing in both Dendozo and Tatsugiri as his opponent protects Mousehold and terastalizes to fire, making his crucial Annihilate weak to Dendozo's water type attacks. Ludwig follows up by again predicting correctly, 
ignoring the annihilate as it protects and doing over half of Mousehold's health and getting an attack boost with order up he then again predicts correctly that Mousehold will not use Follow Me and uses Wave Crash to KO Annihilate in one hit. With this massive lead, Ludwig easily wins the game. With the honorable mentions concluded, it's time for our number one slot the best place so far in Scarlet and Violet. This comes from the finals of a huge regional event between Marcus Stodter and Alex Soto. Marcus just won game one by using his Iron Jugulus' Snarl to lower his opponent's special attack, combined with his Gothitelle Shadow Tag to prevent his opponent from switching out and resetting the special attack drops. But this time, Marcus makes a different play that basically wins him the game and the championship on the first turn of the battle. Instead of attacking with his Iron Jugulus, and switching out his Goldengo, he switches Iron Jugulus into Gothitel. While he can't lower his opponent's stats with Goldengo, he can do something far more evil. Marcus uses Trick into his opponent's Indeedee, which switches their items. Marcus's Goldengo was holding the Choice Specs, an item that boosts damage output but forces the holder to use the same move over and over until they switch. And by bringing in his Gothitelle, Marcus ensures his opponent can't switch out. Unfortunately for Alex, his Ndidi uses Trick Room, a move that is a central part of his strategy, causing slow Pokemon to move before faster ones. But because of the choice specs, Ndidi is forced to continue using Trick Room for the rest of the battle. And using Trick Room after the effect is already up, removes it. With this one move, Marcus not only rendered one of his opponent's Pokemon completely useless and turned the battle into a one against two, he also completely removed any hope his opponent had of using his central strategy. With this one move, Marcus wins the game, the set, and the tournament, earning his play our number one slot. And that concludes my personal 10 best plays of Scarlet and Violet. Though, of course, there's many great plays that we couldn't fit on this list as well. I'd love to know which play was your favorite, and if you'd like to see this for other generations as well.